what I think you guys would find to be uniquely interesting right now is how exactly China goes through this process with taking the kids and then what happens after they're done with the Olympics. How am I, <laughs> I going to keep a straight face with the match? All right, screw it. I'm just going to go for it. Hello, everybody. Here I am with this, <laughs> with this nice background right here. I couldn't figure out where to film. And so today, I want to talk about something I don't think a lot of people are talking about. It was an article in the New York Times. However, I don't think a lot of people know this. However, I do think it is a representation of a larger issue on humanitarian rights. So I have my notes because I think we should all take notes at some point in time about the situation because I am not smart enough to remember all of the details. So China takes kids from certain provinces that it deems as more inclined for hardship. Otherwise, to put it in a different way, they believe that uh, they need to take kids from poor areas in China because they believe, according to the head of the Olympic Committee in Beijing, that they are better to deal with hardships in the Olympic Games. Now, I'm not to argue that point. I think they're probably correct. However, what I am debating right now is whether or not that that's humanitarian, which I think we can all agree that that's not. You might be thinking, well, this is not surprising. I think we would all know that they do things like this. This country, China, as well as other countries. And this isn't a video that is anti Chinese or anything like that. So don't get this twisted, but I do believe in defending kids and that's what I'm here to do. So what I think you guys would find to be uniquely interesting right now is how exactly China goes through this process with taking the kids and then what happens after they're done with the Olympics. So I'm going to try to rant as little as possible, ironically, and we'll see where this goes. So first things first, China, obviously, as I had mentioned, identifies areas that are in hardship within their country. Then what they do is they take kids from those areas and see where they have a natural inclination towards. So, for example, if there is a particularly buff child, then they think that they might be suitable towards weightlifting, things along these lines. OK, now what makes this a little bit more of a, a I guess you could say a tougher pill to swallow than a frat boy's baby batter is the fact that this isn't happening with like a couple hundred kids, but rather instead tens of thousands of kids who are a part of one of 2,000 government-sponsored sports schools. Now, if this doesn't sound bad enough, they are working sometimes, like there's a one uh, instance of a 12-year-old girl who was working six days a week. She was only allowed to see her family one to two times a year. Let's put this in perspective. Imagine, you <laughs> imagine I'm laughing because of how terrible it is, and I know it's gonna sound bad when I say it. Imagine for a second, you are a, say, eight-year-old kid, seven-year-old, five-year-old kid, and you have this whole swath of childhood and your family is not a part of that. You do not know when the holidays are coming up if you're going to be able to see them. All the struggles, the help with homework, what's going on in your dating life, all these like little tiny intricacies that your family is not going to be a part of because your whole mission is to do that very specific sport. Now, it gets a little bit worse than this. First of all, something that I want to mention is that 75% of the Olympic golds in China has been, that has been won since 1984 has gone down in six specific events. I'm just trying to provide a little bit more context about like what kind of sports and individuals are involved in this. So specifically, China doesn't like to compete in all the different sports, at least try to be put all their eggs in uh, a lot of different baskets. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Like, for example, the US will work competing in swimming and all these other things. They focus on six different sports, which is table tennis, shooting, diving, badminton, gymnastics, and weightlifting. Okay. Now, two-thirds of the gold medals that China receives is from females. The reason why this is relevant is because I want to walk you through the trajectory of a female Olympic athlete and how it ends up with them, because they're generally the most vulnerable. So... Let's take uh, female weightlifting, for example. I'm a big weightlifting fan. I follow males and females. I think the Chinese Olympic team, even though they, they, like pretty much every other country, is in trouble or accused of, rather, excuse me, of doping, I still like to watch it because I think that they have a lot of skills and talent. Well, with females, they have a hard time gaining sponsorships, and when they do, they have to share it with the Chinese government. What that means is that after they retire, they don't have a lot to fall back on. A lot of them end up in mass poverty. So they spend six, excuse me, six days a week working. Then they have to share dorm the entire time. Don't get to see their family maybe once or twice a year. 
and that's about it. They only get to leave once a year. And so what happens is after they leave, they don't have a lot of money, they don't have a lot of opportunity, and a lot of times they have physical hardships. They have certain uh, injuries as a result of their competitive career. And so there's a lot of situations where they have to do things that they wouldn't normally support. And uh, for example, there was one woman who, by the way, the New York Times, I will give you the name, but the New York Times didn't release this individual's name, so take that for what you will. Um, I don't think it's propaganda, I do think that it is true. But there is a one woman who had won a Olympic gold, and I believe weightlifting, and because of the doping regimen she had when she was younger, what happened was she ended up growing a beard later on in life, like a full beard, and she ended up having to work in a brothel. And so she went from Olympic gold to unconsensually working in a brothel with a beard, which I don't think that's something that she had particularly wanted. And so the point I'm trying to make with all of this is as the Olympic Games are going, look, I don't mean to be, you know, the, the gossipy bitch at the sorority party, but I'm going to have to be that for a second. I like Olympic Games, but at the same time, I don't think that this is something that we should support in a humane society. I think stories like this are going unreported, and I think something like this is something that we should continue to talk about. More people should know about it if we actually give a shit about human rights or at very least care about kids. I get it. The Olympics are sweet, but they're not that sweet. So anyway, guys, YouTube is censoring me, by the way. I'm getting shadow banned. They censored me twice, sent me an email on it. So if you guys could give it a subscribe or at least a like or even a comment, even if you hated this video, tell me you hate the video so at least it helps the algorithm. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. All right, done. I'm going to keep that beginning where I started laughing.